So before the show, Darren and I were debating a little bit what we wanted to talk about with insecticides, and I said, boy, it, it, we should probably just talk about insecticides in general because there really aren't that many products and they can be used in almost every crop. So if we're talking corn, soybeans, wheat, and even a whole bunch of specialty crops, the main products we're looking at are the organophosphates, that'd be like Lorsban, the pyrethroids, that's by far the biggest family, and the pyrethroids, by the way, come from the chrysanthemum flower. So when people talk about, oh, these dangerous products, really? It's like we're sprinkling a flower out there. Then you've got the neonicotinoids, and really we don't want to use those post emergency and then finally we've got that new transform that will kill aphids and not kill lady beetles. So those are the four basic categories we want to talk about. All right now we said corn, soybeans, and wheat and I can hear it already there's wheat farmers across the country saying what? Bugs? We don't normally have bug problems in our wheat. Guess what? You do. In almost every wheat field I travel to around the country, I'm finding multiple species of bugs, often at threshold levels or above, and they're not getting treated in many cases. The two biggest objections I hear from wheat farmers across the country is, well, number one, we don't get enough moisture here, and uh, number two, I just can't afford this. Well, hey, look, it's really inexpensive. Your return on investment is going to be fantastic. I mean, it's going to be some of the best money you well, spend in your wheat. Well, if it's not, then we don't want to spray. And that's the important thing here, because a lot of people will say, well, let's let the beneficials kill all the bugs. Yeah, eventually they might, but in the meantime, you lost 10 or 20 bushels. That's a bad deal. So you always want to be looking at return on investment. Just because these things are cheap does not mean that we're always going to get a return, does not mean we should always throw them out there. We want you to scout. If you've got bugs, absolutely be spraying. But what we're trying to say here is the threshold is much lower than most people are telling you. Because if you're out there spraying anyway, I mean, how many bugs do you really have to kill to get a $2 gain to pay for your treatment or a $4 gain to double your money. Not very many. The last comment I'm going to make on wheat is if you think you don't have enough moisture out in your field, you really can't afford to have bugs in your field. They're going to put stress on that plant, cause the plant to be an inefficient user of water, and now you're going to suffer even more from lack of water. Now, you can tank mix a lot of these insecticides with herbicides or fungicides, whatever you want. The one you have to be really careful with is Lorsban. So any of those organophosphates, they're formulated quite often with some products that are going to add leaf burn, especially when put together with other products like a fungicide or maybe a buctural herbicide or something like that. So you got to be really careful when you're using Lorsban. Make sure you're talking to your agronomist and not burn the crop. If you don't have issues with pyrethroid resistance or anything like that, you're not concerned about it, then spray the pyrethroid. It's less expensive and you'll have less burn. Last thing, transform. It kills aphids and a few other bugs. Does not kill lady beetles. So, well, very few farmers are currently using this product. Just came out uh, about a year ago you know what, this looks like a good option, especially when you have to spray early in soybeans for aphids. Because, hey, if I can get the numbers way down real fast and I can leave all the beneficials out there, well, now this is a good thing. Hopefully, I don't have to spray twice. Okay, I said final thing, but I, we forgot to mention neonicotinoids. We do not recommend you use those post. We get concerned about bee kills with the neonics when they're sprayed post, and we need to save those for the products like Poncho, Gaucho, Cruiser. We need to save those for seed treatments. So our standard advice is, unless you absolutely need it, use a different product than one of the Neonix Post. And speaking of post-emerge treatments, you're going to need one to control our Weed of the Week. We'll show you which ones are most effective coming up next.